everyone, I am Jessica Dibzinski. I'm so excited to be here today as part of the celebration hub for Jayma Mommy. She recently reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is a really incredible accomplishment. Congratulations, Jayma. So I've been a big fan of Jayma's videos and artwork for several years. And like Janice and Erin both said, when she reached out to me last summer in a private message, I had a really, oh my goodness, I can't believe she noticed me kind of moment. Um, but it was very sweet. The purpose of her message was just to share that she really liked my videos and to offer some positive encouragement. As time went on, our conversation came to include some advice and tips that she had that were really very helpful to me. And I quickly came to realize that not only is Jema a very talented scrapbooker and card maker, but she is an incredibly kind person as well. And so I have just really enjoyed getting to know her as much as you can know someone virtually. And I'm really excited, like I said, to be part of this hop and to scrap lift one of her projects. So I have chosen to scrap lift uh, a layout, actually two different layouts that she did um, that involve triangles. So if you are a follower on my YouTube channel, you are probably not surprised by that at all. I could not help myself. I just seem to be drawn to the triangles when I create on camera. I don't know why that is. Uh, but the first layout that she created was from a kit. And then the second one, she decided to cre recreate that kit on her own. And so I will link both of those videos in the description box down below. All right, let's go ahead and jump right into it and I will show you the layout that I'm scrap lifting. Here is that layout that Jaba created and she used the Sawyer paper collection and she based it on a kit that she had put together. And I think it's going to be perfect for this four by six photo of my family from a camping trip a couple of years ago. Now I'm going to use the Are We There Yet paper collection from Close to My Heart in addition to these two papers from the Mixin collection. I think that those colors were gonna work perfectly. I really love this piece here that has all of those colorful geotags. Um, it's really going to bring out all the different colors that are going on in my photo. And I definitely have my eye on a few stickers from the sticker sheet. I am certain I will find a way to work those in for this layout. All right, so my first decision is going to be which paper goes where. So basically this uh, design involves four different triangles that all come together in the center of the page. And I just need to figure out, you know, which one is going to go where, because when I go to cut my papers, um, that's gonna make a difference. There is definitely a directional pattern to all of them, except for that toffee colored piece. So at first I kind of lay them out this way, thinking that I want my stripes on the bottom, but I don't really like that. And I remembered that in the original video where Jama created her layout, she talked about how the color of her carpet was in the photo and she wanted to put the piece of paper that kind of matched that color down at the bottom, just so that way it all kind of, you know, grounded it together. And I think that I'm going to do that same idea with that toffee piece of pattern paper. So I'm going to move it here in just a second. I'm going to grab it and bring it down to the bottom triangle because it matches that sand perfectly. And I think that that's a good way just to kind of blend in the part of the photo that doesn't really matter so much. I'm pretty happy with this, but now I need to pay attention to the directions of my patterns when I go to cut them. So in Jema's video, she did share several different ways that you can cut triangles for a layout. And I will use some of them and also a different one, I think, from what she had showed in her video. So one of the things that she talked about is that you can just find the center spot in your base paper here. So I'm just measuring a six inches up and six inches over to find where that center point is in my 12 by 12 page. And what I'm going to do is add a little bit of adhesive and just find the corner um, and put the corner of the paper at that center point and then make sure that the edges of the paper hit both of the corners down on the bottom right and the bottom left. Before I put my adhesive down, I thought, you know, I don't want to get crazy with my adhesive. I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a guideline here. So I grabbed my T-square ruler and just lined up from the center to those corners and drew myself a pencil line. It doesn't really matter. It's all going to get covered by paper anyway. But now I know exactly where I need to put my adhesive and not to get too crazy putting it where I'm not ready to have it yet. So this is a pretty simple way to do the triangles for this layout. Um, just 
just measuring and then a little bit of adhesive and you go ahead and stick your paper down, like I said, making sure that both edges are hitting exactly on that corner and then flip it over and trim off the excess. You can see that this way actually saves a lot of your original piece of paper. So definitely it is the biggest paper saver of all of the ways that she shared to create these triangles. So here, I want these geotags to make sure that they are uh, facing in the correct direction. And I'm a little worried that if I do one of the other techniques that she showed, that I'm going to end up cutting my paper wrong and that they won't be facing the right way. So what I decide to do is just cut myself a six inch by 12 inch strip of that paper. And then I figure, you know what, if I just draw a line or make a cut from the center, that six inch point on that paper, um, to each the top and the bottom corners, then that should make a triangle in the right size and, and formation, right? Um, I, I don't know why I keep doing all of these triangle layouts because I really am not a big fan of math and I always worry that there's got to be some kind of like math problem in here somewhere. Um, and I get a little nervous about it, but so here I'm definitely overthinking. And then I realize I, I don't even need to draw myself a line. I can just mark where that six inch point is and then put this in my paper trimmer. So I decide to do that rather than drawing a pencil line that I need to cut along. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this off of my Versamat. And I do have that one mark there and the six inches. So if I put it in my paper trimmer and I line up that six inch mark with the bottom corner, then it should make the correct triangle. Um, I am going to bring my blade from the top rather than the bottom because I do find that when you're cutting triangles, if you run your blade into one of those corners, sometimes it scrunches up your paper. So I always try to be mindful of that when I'm cutting my paper but I'll go ahead and finish cutting this off. It doesn't save as much paper as the first way, um, but I do still have quite a bit of usable paper left over after making that triangle. So I will go ahead and cut my other triangles using a very similar method um, and get the rest of those ready to go. Now, the way that I cut my striped paper was actually a different way that Jama showed in her video. She just cut a eight and a half inch square and then all you have to do is cut it from corner to corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, it didn't really work for my other papers. Like I said, I was nervous about the direction of them, but the stripes I figured were easy enough to work with. So eight and a half inch square does the trick and that will give you on the long side a 12 inch piece uh, for your triangle. So now I have got all of my triangles done and I'll go ahead and finish adhering those to my piece of white daisy. Now in the center of Jama's layout that I am scrap lifting, she had cut a shape from her Cricut um, because the photo is just a little bit lost um, with all of this paper here. And so by putting something in the center, it really helps to ground it all. Uh, so I went to my Cricut and I cut out a little shape and I used some sapphire cardstock. So you'll see that here in just a second, but um, I did realize when I got all of my triangles on that I had just a little piece of white still showing, but no problem, I'll just trim that off in my trimmer and the rest is good to go. I was actually pleasantly surprised with how all of those triangles came together so nicely. So whatever method you take, um, you should be able to bring them all and have four meeting in the middle. All right, so like I said, here is my piece of sapphire cardstock, and I'm going to use that for part of my photo mat, but when I lay my photo down, even though I have matted it on white, I still feel like it's a little lost. There's a lot of blue going on on this page. So I bring in a piece of papaya cardstock, and I think I'm going to double mat it with a really thin strip of that papaya showing. So that looks much better once I put that down. And then I apologize, I went to um, turn on my camera and I accidentally turned it off and vice versa. So I missed a little bit of footage here, uh, but let me walk you through what I have done. So I've gone ahead and grabbed a couple of stickers off the sticker sheet. I used my anti-static pouch to pull the adhesive off the back. 
And then I also have a stamp set from a local scrapbooking store near me uh, where I have this really fun Michigan stamp and die. And I went ahead and I did that twice because I wasn't sure if I wanted to have the one that was blank or the one that I stamped the little sentiment in the center. So that's what I've done to kind of prepare some of my embellishment pieces. And then before I put anything down, I do decide to grab my ink foam blending tool and put a little bit of sapphire ink all along the edge of that Cricut piece just to help it stand out just a little bit more um, against all of those busy patterns that I have going on the page. Then before I put anything else down, I did bring out my splatter box and I used my sapphire shimmer brush and I put a whole bunch of splatters all over the page because you know Jama loves her sparkles and her splatters. So let me pull that out and I'll give it a minute to dry so I don't smear anything. And then I will start putting some of these pieces down. So I'm gonna put the photo over to the right-hand side of the page, and that will give me some space over to the left where I can put my little journaling rectangle, and then also to start building up a couple of embellishment clusters. So I did use my stitched rectangle thin cut set, which I believe is retired, um, but maybe you have something similar in your stash. And I just cut a rectangle that has that stitched detail on it, and then I stamped a couple of journey journaling lines, and I'm tucking it underneath my photo. Then like I said, I have a bunch of stickers that I pulled the adhesive off the back and that little Michigan stamp. So here is where I also lost some of that footage. I apologize. Um, I did put some things up with both thin and regular foam tape um, and created those different uh, clusters there. All right, I still felt like I needed some more papaya because I have it in the striped paper and also in my photo mat. Um, but like I said, a lot of blue and I really wanted to bring out a little bit more of that papaya color. So these are the crisp air dots and I know they don't go with this paper collection, but all I need are the papaya colored dots on here. So I grab a combination of hearts and circles and start putting them around my three different points. Uh, my daughter was also helpful. Oh, mama, here's another heart right here. And then uh, later when I was trying to decide where to put one of my dots and it was taking me forever, she was like, are you going to make a decision? Um, and so I guess I had a little bit of a helper and some comments from the peanut gallery as I was putting these final touches on to the layout but I'm going to put them up here at the top. I really love that sticker that says there's no place like this. I would agree. So this was from a camping trip um, up in Northern Michigan. We were on the Leelanau Peninsula, Peninsula, which is just, it's a beautiful area of Michigan. Not that there is an ugly part of Michigan, but oh my goodness, Northern Michigan, if you've never been, you should definitely take a trip. And here you can see Lake Michigan in the background. And so I'm just really excited to have this particular photo scrapbooked. I have the whole trip in a mini album. So this is going to be the 12 by 12 page that goes into our regular family scrapbook, just to kind of mark the occasion um, since all the other photos are elsewhere. All right, I did find this um, tiny little camera on the sticker sheet as well. And I wanted to use it because of that one that says photo op. I thought it would be fun to have a camera in there too. So I decided to tuck it here underneath my little Michigan uh, thin cut or um, die cut. And that looks cute there. So I'm just gonna tuck it underneath um, to kind of build up that cluster a little bit. And then I was like, hmm, do I have, I don't have an odd or an, like the right number of um, dots here. So let me grab one more and I will put one in the center of the camera and then I'll grab one more to put just up on top of that little cluster. So trying to keep in mind my visual triangle and my odd numbers and I like that that much better. So at this point, I think I'm pretty much done. Um, I really loved both of those layouts that Jama put together. And so I will leave those videos linked in the description box down below, as well as some links to all the other ladies who have scrap lifted Jama for the celebration hop. Tomorrow is Tanya Roberts. So make sure to check back to see how she has celebrated Jama's accomplishment too. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here and watching today. Um, I love watching her Jama's videos. They are so inspirational and I hope that this has inspired you as well. All right, guys, have a great day. Happy crafting. Bye.